Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking about the ENFP personality type, the most imaginative of all personality types. Have you ever as an ENFP felt like uh, everyone was skeptical towards your ideas? I mean, most ENFPs, they seem to have this feeling that everyone around you is going to be skeptical towards you. Everyone is going to have reservations. Everyone is going to have questions. Everyone is going to start out saying no. ENFPs are the most imaginative of all personality types, living on the border between the unconscious possibilities of the imagination and the practical actions to implement your ideas. ENFPs have to constantly persuade and campaign and advise and argue in order to get what they want, in order to realize the potential they see, in order to make their imagination practical reality. So as an ENFP, there is this feeling that you're growing up around naysayers, your parents, your family, your friends, your siblings. They've always been saying no. They've always been so cautious, so pessimistic, so critical, so skeptical. They've always said it's not possible. They've always had questions. They've always said why, but why? Why not tomorrow? Maybe later? And as an ENFP, you can feel as if uh, nobody is able to keep up with you. Nobody is able to believe in you. Nobody is able to trust you. And uh, you end up having to constantly find ways to break the resistance. You have to find ways to get people on your side. You have to get people ways to argue, to get people to see things the way you do. You have to find ways to make people believe you. And uh, so sign number one that you're an ENFP is this feeling that I'm surrounded by naysayers and I have to actively campaign and talk so that they will get so that they will do what I want. <laughs> Have you ever felt like you were a shy extrovert or maybe even an introvert? Because most ENFPs seem to live in the borderland of extroversion and introversion. True it is, they're only extroverted in two specific ways. First, they are novelty seeking types and that requires you to go out and research new ideas, try out new things and have and make new experiences. Second of all, ENFPs are brainstorming types and that requires them to go out and share and talk with other people about their beliefs and values. They have to have discussions, they have to talk out loud, they have to uh, debate and throw out what ifs and uh, throw things on a whiteboard and see what sticks. This in order to truly get the most out of their creativity and their intuition. On almost every single traditional scale of extroversion, ENFPs score low. They are not likely to be collaborative personality types. They are not likely to be outgoing. They are not likely to need a lot of social interaction. And they are not likely to be socially aggressive or pushy. Truth is, as an ENFP, you often live on the border between reality and fairy tale land. And truth is, not a lot of people live in fairy tale land or relate or feel the same way you do or think the same way you do about the world. Most other people have normal attachments to real life concerns and real life problems and most of the time these concerns take up most of their thinking capacity and then interests and hobbies and life interests and that means as an ENFP there is often a feeling that I'm alone in this I'm uh, gonna have to go by myself in this I'm gonna have to go my own way I'm gonna have to break off from the norm I'm gonna have to find my own place I'm going to be weird I'm going to be different I'm going to be sometimes an alien to other people other people are gonna think I'm strange other people are gonna see me as an oddball or a strange unicorn or a magical creature and not as a normal person. And I'm going to struggle to have normal conversations with other people and to talk with other people and blend in because I wasn't meant to blend in. I was born to stand out, but I also don't really like to be seen. So if I'm going to stand out, I'd rather be 
standing out somewhere where not a lot of people are going to look at me. Sign number three that you are an ENFP. Hey, that rhymes. ENFPs have multi-track minds, multi-dimensional minds that go in multiple different directions. They can have conversations about multiple different topics. They can jump between and explore different parallel options at the same time. They can hold different variables in their heads. They can see change and they can change their minds as they talk. They can come up with new ideas. They can go from one point to another. They can see and think several steps ahead. A lot of time ENFPs might confuse their ability to predict the future with introverted intuition, but if it's pattern recognition, if it's tracking step by step what's going to happen, it's extroverted intuition. And extroverted intuition is something that uh, is in its nature multilinear and scattered where introverted intuition is something that is cohesive and holistic and synthetic. So what the extroverted intuitives enjoy doing and what the ENFPs in particular lo love doing is collect, collect, collect. New ideas, new Pinterest lists, new maps, new calendars, new uh, book lists, new lists of things you want to buy, uh, clothes that you want to get, uh, things you want to try out, places you want to visit, adventures you want to go on, restaurants you want to experience. The ENFP mind is one that focuses on realistic impossibilities and realistic impossibilities that's something you can feasibly do in the real world that uh, is going to be very difficult to achieve and often very far off or very hard to make happen. It's not going to be the average option that's next door. It's going to be something that requires a bit of an adventure or journey. You're not going to know how to get there. You're not going to know what steps are necessary. You're not going to know exactly how, what the most smooth way to do something is. But the ENFP mind is uh, extremely skilled at naturally logistics because of this. They're good at spotting ways to solve problems. They're good at figuring out how to jump over the fence. Good at finding secret paths to take or new tricks to use to get ahead or to do something quickly. Sign number four. ENFPs have fast intuition and fast emotional processing. That means they can get upset quickly. They can get sad quickly. They can get happy quickly. Their minds... Their ideas, their feelings grow and mature and change very easily. They can go from uh, feeling bad at one minute to finding feeling good another. They can unexplainably jump from happiness and joy to sadness and pensiveness and melancholy. And this is just a natural part of the ENFP. As the ENFP scrolls between and jumps between different feelings, different compartments in their mind and in the world. They meet people that make them sad, they have bad experiences, they have failures, they go to places that don't live up to their expectations, they go to places that surprise them, they find and try things that turn out to be better than they thought. They get hung up on a problem or get stuck on something and uh, yeah, as an ENFP you hate feeling stuck and it makes you feel terrible and uh, ENFPs, they change their minds and they change their emotional wiring and they constantly go over their processing all the time as it happens in real time. That also means uh, as an ENFP it's easy for you to let go of things. If something bad happens it's easy for you to go first get upset over it and maybe cry a bit but then to, to move forward and say yeah that's how life is and now I'm going to try something better and now I'm going to move on and now I'm going to find something else to do and now I'm going to focus on something positive. So as an ENFP that's a superpower and it's something that's going to throw other people off. Uh, sometimes uh, people might think just because you changed your mind or because you your feelings can be a bit all over the place that you're not consistent or that you're fickle or that you don't have real feelings or that your feelings are le res less real or that your ideas are less important. But that's often far from the truth. It's uh, 
the end goal that's most important it's where you want to go and where you want to end up it's most important and it's the process is just as important as the steps taken and uh, so as an ENFP it's that feeling of uh, can I change my mind am I allowed to feel differently am I allowed to try new things am I allowed to make a change am I allowed to uh, feel a certain way and this feeling that other people want to control when and how you express your feelings or how you share your ideas or how you speak or how you say something or how you do something and that can be really annoying because yeah as an ENFP you don't want to feel controlled and uh, you don't want people to tell you how to feel or how to do something so as an ENFP it's very important to say sorry I can't feel the way you feel (laughs) sorry this is how I am or not even sorry, this is just who I am, God damn it. This is just me. That, yeah, uh, I am like that. And uh, do you accept that? <laughs> and yeah, you just have to accept that. You know the saying, the more the merrier? For an ENFP, it's often the other way around. The more people, the more people to manage, the more people to convince, the more people to get on your side, the more complications, the more people that... Uh, change our plans, the more variables to consider, the more alternatives, the more opportunities, the more possibilities. One person doesn't like that, another person likes that. How do I get all of them together? You know, it's exhausting. And uh, because of this, uh, ENFPs are unlikely to stick in that box of uh, I like to be at a big party with lots of people. (laughs) No, uh, a lot of time ENFPs like smaller groups or fewer people that you can have more intimate conversations with and that you can feel more intimately connected to people that share your interests and values people that like the foods you do people that have similar beliefs to the ones you do so that there is less necessary time for compromise so that you don't have to constantly adjust to every single dietary wish so that you don't have to find a place that everybody will like so that you can just do your own thing and be yourself without having to feel that you are going against other people's wishes or that other people are going to complain or make a problem out of things. ENFPs ideally want to feel connected to other people and they they have extroverted feeling in the sense that they value connections with other people and value having similar interests to other people. But they are not extroverted feeling types in the sense of compromising to fit in with society and with what other people think and what other other people want. Rather, ENFPs are individualists feeling perceiving types that have their own opinions and strong opinions about what should be done, what's right and what's wrong. And that's why a lot of time, and this is sign number six that you're an ENFP, you're going to ask people for their opinion and then you're going to disagree with them and you're going to say this is this is my opinion part of it is because you're a rebel and you like to go against the flow and you enjoy disagreement you enjoy having a different opinion uh, but also because uh, you want to explore different perspectives you're an explorer you're a person that wants to Uh, see a word or feeling or a thought from different perspectives. Yes, that's good because of this, but it's bad because of that. Yeah, I understand that argument or I agree with that, but I disagree because of this. So as an ENFP, you're an explorer of nuance and perspective. So a person that says and thinks of different ways to see or feel about something. And this is part of why ENFPs are such quick emotional processors. They can feel happy about something but also sad because of it from another perspective depending on how they look at it or what day it is or what time it is or what they are feeling right at this time. So ENFP's feelings and uh, their intuitive process is quite complex because they explore something from multiple different perspectives. They are a democratic unity of people and individuals crammed into one person. They are multiple perspectives brought into one and so as an ENFP you're going to have an interest in understanding the views of other people and finding people to connect with but also an interest in 
being able to discuss different viewpoints and see things from different sides. So sign number seven that you're an ENFP is you spend one hour passionately trying to get somebody over to your side only to afterwards end up having to spend an hour convincing them not to come over to your side. <laughs> so what you end up doing is uh, you are as an ENFP very aware of the emotions of other people. ENFPs have exerted feeling in the sense that they are always aware of how they are perceived by other people. They notice how other people respond to different words and feelings and expressions and body language. They note this when somebody appears to be offended or hurt. They note this when other people seem to disagree with them or when other people seem to agree with them. They note this when there's skepticism or a hint of critique. They note this when there's judgment. And so as an ENFP, it's learning to manage that. It's uh, learning to be aware of other people's feelings and uh, being able to explore 100% how the other person is feeling from multiple perspectives. It's uh, what arguments do they like or dislike? What things do they dislike? What things do they like? What choices do they prefer? What arguments tend to weigh more heavy with them? What things do they tend to disagree with? What things do they tend to agree with? And um, as an ENFP, it's uh, necessary to be able to have a discussion from multiple perspectives to be able to explore this. It's not enough to simply have a yes or no discussion. Do you want this or that? Okay, good. It's why would you want that? And why would you prefer that? Is there something else you would prefer more? Would you prefer that if we did this and this? Would you prefer that if we tried this or that? Can we, would you still prefer it if this? Would you also like it if that? So it's just uh, getting people to open up and uh, getting other people to share with new ends their feelings and their opinions with you and being able to explore an issue from multiple sides because it's not just enough to see one thing. ENFPs are not shallow types. ENFPs need to see things from different perspectives and need to uh, try things out from multiple different viewpoints. It's not enough to just experience something face on. It's not enough to simply agree with somebody. It's knowing where an agreement begins and where it ends and uh, where you are connected and where you are disconnected, where there's harmony, where there's disharmony. So that you can bridge differences and connect more deeply with people. Are you an ENFP? Do you know any ENFPs? Let me know in the comments down below which one of these seven signs you felt was the most you and uh, what other sides you recognize in ENFPs. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.